Hey guys, so iOS 16.2 has just been released into the world after being in beta testing for about eight weeks now. So I thought I'd give a rundown of the changes and features coming to this fresh new update. So we can see here, uh, I was on the public beta testing um, for the full eight weeks and the last RC build that was sent out uh, last week came in at five gigabytes. So this may vary depending on which device you're on and stuff. But um, we can see here on the about, there's a bunch of different things that are included in, in this update. So I'm just gonna go through them in this video, what the new features are, what the changes are. So for number one, we have the new Freeform app. This was introduced in the beta testing early on and Apple puts it as a new app for working creatively with friends or colleagues on Mac, iPad and iPhone. And they put it down as a flexible canvas that lets you add files, images, stickies and a lot more. In the main menu, you can see your recent shared favorites, ones that you've deleted. You wanna obviously create a new board. You just go in onto the new board icon. We have a bunch of different things you can do here. The cam it's an empty canvas, so you can zoom in and out. You have a bunch of options. You can add notepads. You can add different shapes, loads of different things, objects, animals. And we also have text box. You can obviously do freehand writing. So for creativity and I guess working collaboratively, this would be quite useful. Uh, there's a bunch of different things you can do in this app here. Uh, you can also add any images. Uh, you can add a link. You can insert from different places. You can take a picture directly from camera. You can put in photos or videos. You can scan things. So, I mean, working across it, it would be good for like brainstorming loads of other things. So for number two is Apple Music Sync introduced late in the beta testing phase and was announced by Apple via the newsrooms a few days before being introduced into the beta. The app opens up a new way to sing along to millions of songs in Apple Music. It has fully adjustable vocals which let you do it with original artists singing solo or you can mix it up and there's a new enhanced beat by beat lyrics which make it even easier to follow along with your music. So I've got a duet example here. I'm not going to actually play the song. I don't want to get a copyright strike. But if we just go to the song here, we can see it can pops up with the songs that are compatible with Apple Music Sing. You get a little slider here, which controls the vocals. And we can see if you're duetting, you'll have one person on the left side, another person on the right. If I might just do it quickly just to show you. So if you put it up. You can see it turns off because it's just playing the normal song, but if you... And now it'll just be the instrumental itself. And you can sing along. Just turn that off quickly. Don't want to get into trouble. So, for number three, we have advanced data protection which we can see here. This new option expands the total number of iCloud data categories protected using end-to-end -end encryption to 23, including iCloud backup notes and photos, protecting your information, even in the case of a data breach in the cloud. Initially, this will only be available to uh, users in the US, but with the Apple have said that they're gonna be rolling this out globally early 2023 to other countries. They announced this originally via the newsroom on December the 7th, and they also announced additional protection features. One was iMessage contact key verification and another one was security keys for Apple ID. And these protections are aimed at those who face extraordinary digital threats such as journalists, human rights activists and members of the government. These are additional measures on top of the recently introduced lockdown mode. So if you want to read more, I'll leave a link in the description to the newsroom page, but you can see here, it just gives you a little overview of what I just said. Encrypt your data to keep it secure. I can't activate this at the moment because it's not available. Like I said, it'll be available early 2023, but I think this is just doubling down on privacy. So it just gives you that extra bit of peace and quiet if you want. It's aimed at people that are high threat levels, but I guess if you wanted to turn it on just to be that extra bit safe, there's nothing wrong with that. For number four, we have some changes coming to the lock screen. So there was a new setting which allows you to hide your wallpaper or notifications on your always-on display on the iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max 
unfortunately I have the 12 Pro Max here but I'll put in some images of what those differences are. For everyone else we have the introduction of two new widgets so we got the sleep widget allows you to keep track of your sleep so there was two different widgets for that and there was also the introduction of the medications in the health part of it so if you have any medications added or you need reminders for you can add these two widgets to your lock screen as well so for number five we have additions to game center so we can see here you can see all your friends play activity and achievements on the redesigned dashboard and there's you can find game center in your friends profile so this is the new splash screen you get they also introduced share play support so you can play multiplayer games with people you on FaceTime call with and there's also a new activity widget allowing you to see what your friends are playing and achieve in the games right from your home screen so if you would add that you can see from here we have the game center you have your continue playing and you have the new activity ones here so you can just keep an eye on what your friends are playing and stuff for number six we have changes to Apple TV or slash live activities so for live activities um, they've enabled this again because they had turned it off in previous betas but what this does is the new update to live activities was more frequent updates so if you scroll down here to live activities you see you have an option now here to turn on more frequent updates but doing this will probably drain your battery faster so use it with caution and if you do have other apps that do support live activities it depends on the developers updating the apps to allow that additional frequent updates i have an example of this app here that i use a lot of live activities on but we can see it doesn't allow me to do turn on the frequent updates number seven we would have um, improvements to the home screen up to the home up sorry and we can see here there's on the splash screen you have a uh, new home categories you can see your home at a glance control your home with a tap there's a multi-camera view different features they've added and they also changed the app's architecture to allow for more reliability and efficiency of communication between smart home accessories and apple devices matter being introduced recently it's probably just to secure and make that more reliable in the background so for tidbits there were little things that were different so another thing i noticed was now when you pull down for your notification center you all your previous notifications will be there instead of hiding away in the account tab depending on which one you have activated so it's less chance of you missing um notifications so that's a nice little feature also for airdrop settings there was a there was change made for the everyone section now that's been limited to 10 minutes and um, this is on the back of the chinese government asking apple to do this so they've implemented this feature in here don't want to get into that because political reasons that was amongst one of the things they also made improvements on the new iphone 14 pro models for crash detection optimizations because a lot of people were saying that their phones were going off with crash detection on roller coasters and stuff so that's kind of made that a bit more reliable in that sense quite a few bug fixes hoping that there's some improvements to battery life through the beta testing i did notice that my battery life wasn't the best my battery is at 87 percent and it hasn't been the best to be honest since updating to ios 16 it has been quite bad and i'm really hoping that they can fix this overall it's a nice bunch of features that have been introduced in this new update and i'm assuming they will be rolling out ios 16.3 probably next week so i'm on the public beta at the moment but i'll probably start doing weekly videos of the changes coming into the new betas so stick around for those if you want to see more thanks for watching guys if you just give a little tap on the like button that would help my channel a lot and obviously if you enjoy my content and want to see more of this just give it a little push on the subscribe button